We're very grateful for her time. Terry Savage, a columnist for the Chicago Sun-Times and author. She joins us now from Chicago. Terry, a lot of viewer questions. Before we go to the calls, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank thanks, you. Thanks, thanks for, for doing this. I, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself. But talk about the FDIC raising um, the, the limit on uh, the amount of money that's protected in bank deposits. You know, that's an interesting part of this uh, Senate version of the bill, that they will uh, raise the limits from 100000 to 250000 Now, this is not just to protect people that are wealthier than others. It's because a lot of small businesses keep their accounts in banks and they have payroll to meet or they need a lot of money on hand to pay for supplies on a weekly basis. So they've been running around scrambling, trying to move accounts from bank to bank. It's the smaller banks that usually finance small businesses, so they've seen withdrawals. And the idea would be to raise the insurance. The, uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal is also reporting that the Fed, uh, the FDIC will now have an unlimited line of money from the Treasury so that even though that fund is rather limited, it's, it's uh, put in, the money that's in it comes in from bank contributions, or, so to speak. Uh, they will now have an unlimited line from the Treasury. So all in all, the idea is to make the banks and the customers of the banks feel secure. So people don't have to run around uh, creating separate accounts. All right, let's get to a couple exactly. calls. Farron in Hot Springs, okay. Arkansas. Farron, what's your question? Okay, my question is, can anyone really tell me how the current crisis is affecting the interest rates on new home mortgages and what exactly is the current interest rates on new home mortgages or even refinancing? Uh, everyone I've talked to has quoted me a rate that I feel is much too high for my situation and tells me that I need to lock it in now because the rates will skyrocket with, the, you know, the current crisis. All right. Terry? Okay, that is exactly the uh, part of the crisis that's affecting Americans. The banks are afraid to lend to one another, the big global banks, and the banks in your neighborhood are afraid to make more mortgage loans because they've got a whole bunch of bad loans on the books and they don't know what to do with them. So currently, rates are probably a little higher than they should be given the depressed state of the economy, but banks are afraid to lower rates. They want to cover their risks. If we get a package that gives uh, the confidence to get the banks lending again, then for the short time you should see rates drop and you should see loans become more available um, at any price, actually. Down the road, there is that interesting question. They create all this new money, uh, borrowings. Maybe interest rates will rise out of fears of inflation. That's way down the road. The idea is to get money flowing again. That should temporarily, at least, bring rates down where you all can right. lock them in. All right. Cindy is in, on the line from Hamilton, Massachusetts. Hi, Cindy. What's your question? Hi. Hi, Terry. Yes, I'm just wondering, if we do pass this $700 billion bill, what assurance do we have that it will fix our financial crisis? <laughs> That's a very good question. What you're saying is, um, well, my mother used to tell me, don't cry wolf, you know. Um, the government has said so many times, most recently in the last month or so, that we've now fixed it. We fixed it when we bailed out Freddie and Fannie. We fixed it with the loan to AIG. And so there's a, a really, they've lost their credibility on this. And the answer is, we don't have any assurances. Um, what they're trying to craft now is a bill that will send money into the banking system but the real idea of that is to restore confidence, and we don't know what price confidence is, how much money it will take, so there are no guarantees. Are right now student loans available, household loans available, or is it all clogged up? You know, it's all clogged up, and okay. student borrowers, um, I, was, I think I was on your show earlier this summer talking about the fact there's going to be a mad scramble. You may have been approved for a student loan, but because of some of the underwriting relationships between the banks and the government, it was very difficult to get student loans for fall, and it's going to be even more difficult to get them for the next semester, which for many students, they start planning on that in Absolutely. November and December, unless something changes. So you need to speak with your uh, lender and make sure your next semester is going to be there for you. All right, quickly, a couple of emails. First of all, Kevin writes, I've recently changed jobs and need something to do something with my 401k. What do you suggest? Uh, a local CD with my bank, roll it over into an IRA with my investor. Help, he says. <laughs> Well, um, you know something, if you're still young and still working and still contributing, I don't think you particularly want to roll it over to the safety of a CD. I would suggest one of the major mutual fund companies that you've heard of, Fidelity and Vanguard and T. Rowe Price, where they have a wide assortment of funds and they will give you advice on how to diversify 
between those funds. And the reason I say rollover is because many people change jobs and they have smaller accounts in various different companies that they've left. If you put it all in one place, it's easier to sort out and diversify your investments. So don't take the check now. You have the new mutual fund company. Contact your old employer and handle it as a direct rollover so you won't have taxes and penalties. And most people's 401ks are managed. There's some agency or some, somebody like Fidelity or Vanguard managing it. A lot of companies are. All right, Chris. Well, it's interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, let me just point out that they, they may have mutual funds from well-known companies, but the art, the art is not that the mutual funds are a problem. It's that picking the different funds that correlate to the right mix for you. And that's the kind of help that many um, employee benefits plans do offer through uh, companies like FinancialEngines.com. And others, um, if you roll over to these fund companies, will give you that advice. All right. We ran way over, but we're going to... Uh, oh, sorry. That's all right. It's my fault. Well, well <laughs> you're going to stick around, though. A lot more questions I to will. answer. And Terry's going to be around. So, Terry, thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it.